I have uh, these files prepared, so I will go uh, between them, show you the individual parts. So let's take a look at what we have here. So I was tasked actually um, by uh, a designer to kind of like take the initial concept for a furniture piece and create a fitting three-dimensional model. So the designer was very comfortable in creating side views and like a front or a side for the shell as well as the legs. And those I needed to uh, translate into a three-dimensional model. So for example, if I go to the front, there we can see that actually the legs, they don't really match um, really what the designer want go to here and you see that's too high it's not deep enough etc the angle is incorrect and let me now explain you how I started this project DXF uh, for those who are not necessarily very familiar with it uh, think about it it's a CAD format for two-dimensional and three-dimensional work and, and in the industry like in furniture we use DXF a lot two-dimensionally because we can create the construction uh, documents to give uh, a company to create then uh, the furniture pieces to cut the lumber, bend the metal. Um, and as well with DXF, you can also, for example, drive a CNC machine. But the another nice thing about the DXF import versus, for example, here in this case, simply importing a sketch is because everything is path based Right. See, I can select these, I can measure distances, etc. When I zoom in all the time, it stays super sharp. That you do not have with uh, a JPEG image. And DXF is a very common uh, format uh, invented by Autodesk. And this is kind of like what I got initially. This is a little bit modified. This product isn't on the market yet. And if I select something here, you can see that everything is just a line segment. And this file, you can, for example, export. Let's say share, and then I will bring this over to Shaper. Let's make a new design. And there we have it. So this line up here, should be 10 inches inside the AutoCAD file. If I select this line in Shaper, you see it's also 10 inches. So this drawing came in to scale, which is perfect. I do not have to scale anything or worry about it. I can just continue working with it. And because the DXF is just imported as a sketch, I can now select the transform tool and select everything, translate, and this point I would like to move to the grid, let's say there, but I snap it roughly, okay, there, now I have this one centered, very good. So open this uh, group, there you see there's one sketch with 300 23 elements in it. This is now uh, also the top view. That's all not correct. So select everything, transform. We will rotate it. I will select a line like this one there. Very good. And then just rotate it. by minus 90 degrees. Very good. So from the front, the front view is good. From the side, the side view obviously is not good. So what I will do is I will go in here and then start selecting all these elements. Unfortunately, these drawings are kind of messy I got. They're very faceted. So in my case, there's a little bit of a cleanup process to do. The better the drawings you get, the less of these steps you have to do, but it doesn't take too long. 
some double tapping and everything is good. Very nice. There, the socket detail. And then I will adjust the widget so it rotates around this vertical edge. Then I rotate this one and pay attention to the group, what's going to happen just in a second. You see these two groups were now split up into two parts. This is actually very convenient because the the front view, maybe I would like to move a little bit further back. So that is actually my case. Sketch two, the low one. Then I go to transform and just move it back. Very good. Okay, so let's go back to um, here. This is essentially then how I oriented the individual views. Then I loaded in the shell. removed actually the lag and then I needed to continue creating all these uh, elements I needed to create the the shell uh, sorry the lag configuration the client was looking for let me talk a little bit about how I did this so uh, let me turn all these parts off and there are my DXFs Another nice thing, as I mentioned before, let me just repeat this, because this is a path, I have the luxury to measure everything. So I could, for example, select the circle and it tells me the radius in case this is really correct. So if the designer specifies that this tube later should be 0.281 inch radius, I can sample it right from it. How what's the the thickness of the the pipes so i can select these two lines 0.562 let's maybe select these two lines what do we have here 0.565 and here you can see uh, the person worked a little bit dirty but that's fine and these sketches are done very fast they are more they're suggestive to give you an idea um, because the, the material thickness for the pipe will be specified anyway. So as you can see, I can measure everything quite nicely. And let me talk a little bit about further now how I continued working with uh, that information. So the tricky part here was I needed to create two vertical legs. No? And then they are also connected. And I continued, or sorry, not continued. I started first by creating these two cylinders from the front view. And you can see they perfectly line up. Again, because I can zoom in indefinitely, I get very precise uh, positions. Unlike with a sketch, when you work with 150 DPI or 300 DPI sketch, at a certain point, you will run out of resolution. Here from the side too, so I positioned these two cylinders. That was very, very helpful because, check this out, then I used the project tool and projected onto the floor the profile of these two tubes. And that gave me then the ability to draw a line in between and create a construction plane. Now this construction plane, as you can see, is perfectly oriented the way how I need it to be. For those who are not uh, familiar about the construction planes, how to create them, uh, let me go and show you this and add, then we can construction plane. We have different types. I would like through edge at an angle. You can select this line and just rotate the plane as needed. And once this was established, then I created the side sketch. Let me go back to the right side. So this is the new uh, cross section. Here I have the lag profile. You see it right there. 
there was a little little tip in creating the circle right actually on the sketch perfectly centered so when I would sweep it the pipe would really run centered along this path I created so let me show you quickly how I created this was a nice trick actually so here's my construction plane and if I select it and with a finger double tap it orients everything very good so now I'm this on the sketch plane and here is the line this line I lock for the moment so I can't move it let me create uh, a circle then I position the circle onto there and then I just draw a line and this line to this line they have to be perpendicular so let's go to top so I'm actually away from that original orientation there you see the circle rotated in 3d space and now I can go to transform move and rotate select the circle then I move the widget onto this line and you see how it <laughs> perfectly rotates and then lines and then I just rotate actually that circle bang very easy process or tip to create a circle perpendicular to a line and centered. So let me remove these two. So then I continued modeling these individual parts. At one point I also needed to create the angled part. So there's for example now my, my angled sketch. I also there created another plane, created the sketch on it. Let me show you something. So when I go directly onto that sketch and then I show my DXF sketch from the side, yeah, you see, hmm, doesn't really line up. But because the sketch is on this plane and I also locked, for example, this line so it can't move, and then I go to the right view. I have the key to move actually these individual parts up and down. Uh, wait, I locked this one here right now. There, unlock. Oh wait, how did I do this? Uh, why doesn't this work now? There, so you can modify these parts. Um, I was also moving these elements up and down, which I don't know why. Oh, is there another point that's locked? Maybe this is a little bit further in the design, but what I was trying to say is by drawing this line and having this an arc coming down, and then we make this tangent and tangent. This should be uh, vertical, very good. So this sketch, while I see it from the side, is however angled. So when I move this point down, you can see how everything adjusts. And then you only need to slide this one right into the position where it has to be. There, very good. And there you can see where that sketch is. So it has the correct orientation and from the side it gives you then also the correct bend. And this process I then further continued and followed till I had all the individual pipes built. Since everything is symmetrical I only needed to build one half and then I mirrored everything over. So working with the, pro the projection um, of sketches and also positioning these two views inside my scene uh, helped me actually pretty quickly to create the legs exactly the way how the client wanted.